You're listening to the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill McIntyre, and it's time for this week's Long Island News, the show that talks to newsmakers and other important people from Nassau and Suffolk County that matter to Long Island and Long Islanders like you. So each week we'll have a conversation about issues that affect all of us. I live on Long Island just like you, and I want to know more about the people making the big decisions that affect all of us. Well, this week, we want to continue our conversation with the people running for office in the upcoming November election. And today, we're going to focus on the town of Oyster Bay and meet Mr. Jared Baer, a candidate for a town of Oyster Bay supervisor running on the Democratic ticket. His website says he's a former Long Island prosecutor who served several years in the Suffolk County District Attorney's Office. And in 2011, he left the DA's office and took over his family's business. Well, let's learn more from the man himself, Mr. Jared Bear. Welcome to this week's Long Island News. Good morning, Bill. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, thanks for coming. I, I, um, I'm sure you're busy, and uh, <laughs> to carve out a little time for us is uh, much appreciated. No, this is exciting. Thank you. Um, so, uh, first up, let's talk a little bit about yourself. This is your first foray into politics. Yes, right? this is uh, my first race. Uh, I. My first job ever, actually, as a high school senior, I worked as a intern for a freshman congressman named Steve Israel okay. uh, when he had a small little office in Bayshore. Um, so at a very young age, I uh, was introduced to the world of politics a bit. And while in college, I interned on Capitol Hill for Steve Israel. I interned for another uh, congressman at the time, Bill Delahunt. Uh, and I've stayed involved and uh, as an advocate and, uh, you know, working on some campaigns and volunteering. But yes, this is my first, uh, time as the guy with the lapel pin right, <laughs> standing right, in the right, front right. of the room. Well, you know, interestingly, as a, um, so as a brand new guy, I and mean, when you got into that arena, what was your, what were your first impressions or when you, maybe saw something go a little, wait a minute, I didn't expect that to happen kind of thing. I learned and, and got a quick education on the amount of time and effort that one has to put in to be a public servant. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, back then, Steve Israel, obviously, he's a, he became a very prominent uh, nationally uh, ca- uh, congressman for you know, the decade and a half. But it, he, he would work all week in Washington. Then when he was home on the weekends, that's when I, I used to drive him around. I'd pick him up in his Pathfinder mm-hmm. and we'd drive around. We'd go to VFW halls. We'd go to town hall meetings. We'd go in the office. And this would be from very early in the morning to early at night. Um, and it, it was a the word service came up a lot. Uh, the, you're on the uh, receiving end of a lot. And I think mm-hmm. it can be difficult. Right. Um, and sometimes you can uh, be told by two different people on opposite ends of the spectrum that you're not doing it right or you're doing something wrong. Right. Um, so I, with that, I don't want to speak for, uh, uh, from uh, Congressman Israel, but I imagine there's some, some frustration in that. But mm. at the same time, it was an incredibly rewarding experience seeing him that, you know, and really grassroots level. This was still, I mean, it was 2002. So the internet wasn't what it was. Twitter uh, wasn't what it was. Um, I mean, when I was doing press clippings, I would literally take the local papers and, you know, cut out the articles and then right. they make copies. So I'm, I'm not that old, but I'm pretty old. But that's um, I mean, even just, I remember one time we got this guy, he, he had just been waiting for his flag from the federal government. And we worked and it took a lot of time and a lot of phone calls, but we got on the flag that he had been waiting for for years and we got him a certificate that came with it. And that was a really proud moment as a, as a firm handshake that the congressman got that day. Right. And that, you know, those kind of things stuck with me throughout my you know personal life and professional life and kind of led me to uh, jumping into the fray and trying to uh, be the supervisor of Oyster Bay. Right, right. Well, I, yeah, it, I think it's, um, you know, perspect- from perspective, it, that's a big deal to, to be able to help a guy like that. Right. But then you pick your head up and you see the array of other things that right. need a kick or a, a push or and uh, it, it can be daunting. Yes, it, it's daunting's a, a good word for it. Uh, there, are a, there are a lot of issues nationally. There are a lot of issues locally going on. And I think you have to prioritize. You have to figure out what your priorities are mm-hmm. and where you want to put your effort into. But I think you also need to be, uh, from what I've learned in speaking with people, whether it's at events or whether or not it's just at the soccer field with my kids or whether or not it's in the grocery store, is the 
the residents, the, the the voters will tell you what is important to them, right. and you have to listen to them. It's not always it's, it's as I sit here, you know, going on and on. It's it's a lot about listening right. as opposed to, and saying I hear you, I understand it, I'm going to look into it, and I will see what we can do to make that better right. and what we can do to improve it. That yeah, yeah. the voters aren't usually shy. Uh, no, uh, when it comes to you know uh, telling their lead or leaders, I guess right. what what it is they like and dislike, uh, they should. It's too bad. They're shy at the polls. <laughs> Unfortunately, often, yeah. But, uh, but no, they it's they shouldn't be shy. This is you know that their government, even especially at a local level, this has the most direct impact on their day to day lives. Yeah. This is their parks. This is their roads. This is their public safety. Mm-hmm. This is their water quality. Um, and you know it, it's 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 been it's been a lot, but it's also been exciting and it, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's it's certainly job security because the problems will uh, continue to pile up. <laughs> You know, right. Yeah. Um, so now, in in particular, why are you uh, running against Joe Saladino? Now, he's a third term incumbent. Yes. Um, but you want that town of Oyster Bay supervisor job. Uh, I do. I, I'm, in, I'm in the wrong seat if I don't. What compelled me to get off the couch was as somebody living in Oyster Bay, I was not happy with how the town was being run. And I think that someone that is not a career politician with the life experience that I've had, uh, can bring a new, fresh perspective to the town that has had its share of issues and, frankly, scandals for you know the, the, my lifetime. Frankly, right. my opponent was appointed in 2017 to this position after his predecessor was let out of city hall in handcuffs, right. and what was the largest corruption scandal in this county's history, probably mm-hmm. with the county executive and a, a multitude of uh, convictions and stuff, and. He he came. Uh, my opponent came in and promised ethics reforms and strengthening and restoring trust to the town. And as I sit here today, uh, in, his, in his you know in his third term, the town is currently under criminal investigation by the Nassau County DA because his pick for the inspector, my opponent's pick for inspector general, uh, got caught trying to give a two million dollar town contract to his business associate who was listed on his website. Yeah, that's. Uh... That, um, that's frowned upon. I understand. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's okay. uh, as a former prosecutor, um, I'm, I'm not involved in the investigation. Obviously, I am uh, anxiously waiting for uh, updates on the investigation. But six years. It, it's been six years since he was appointed to this position, and he nothing's nothing's changed. Uh, and I got uh, frustrated reading more and more at the, just of all, all the corruption and frankly ethical issues that keep coming up in the town and what's most striking with me with the inspector general issue that went on and eventually originally he didn't resign then he did resign is the ethics board including eth- outside ethics council rubber sh- did an investigation and said what he did was okay and rubber stamped oh. it it was not until newsday came out with an, with an article and then uh, i with some of my other candidates and uh, county legislator delia de riggy witten came out and we held a press conference and we kept pushing until uh, mr noon resigned but what i've also learned is corruption in and of itself is bad and can lead to several other issues and it's part of what i'm uh, running on but to get to the direct impact on john q taxpayer brian noon what during this ethics investigation was told that was relieved of his duties he was still on you know they, they said that he could not review contracts or perform his duties he was still making his 150 or 154 thousand dollar a year salary during those two months that he wasn't allowed to but on top of that the town had to hire a retired state supreme court judge and pay that judge a retired judge 75 dollars an hour to do the job of inspector general and every penny that went to both uh the former inspector general and the retired judge was money that wasn't going to our roads right that wasn't that money wasn't going into reserve funds or development plans for Hicksville or any other multitude of other issues that could be going to. And that's what compelled me to get involved. Just a reminder, you're listening to this week's Long Island News on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill McIntyre, and my guest today is Mr. Jared Bear, a candidate for the Town of Oyster Bay Supervisor running on the Democratic ticket. That's interesting stuff. As a prosecutor, you see those things that pop up in the news, and well, wait a minute, that's um, that looks illegal. <laughs> <laughs> right, that, that, that's for the DA to investigate, and then they, uh, they, the current DA was has been there for years. Um, is is and I, I'm looking forward for an update. I'm sure that they're working hard and looking into everything. Right, right. Now you've also told us there are, are your priorities when, and the first you mentioned is ethics reform. Correct. Um, me personally, when I, when I talk about those, one of the things that 
um, I've been disappointed with for a long time is people who internally police themselves. Yes, I agree. Um, it's, you know, the the fox running the hen house sort of situation. Mm -hmm. That's why one of what I'm uh, working on, and this is I'm working on with Assemblyman Chuck Levine, is there's an ethics crisis in Oyster Bay. I think that's been established. Newsday had an editorial uh, when the Brian Noon scandal was going on saying that the Oyster Bay way has got to go. And the most striking thing to me about reading that editorial is that they never once had to explain what the Oyster Bay way was. Mm. Everybody just knew what they meant. Um, and <laughs> Make America great again. Right. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah. what I'm working on with the Assemblyman Chuck Levine is the ethics crisis has gone beyond what the town can do to resolve it. And I'm writing, going to be writing a letter and requesting state legislation to have state intervention and have the state appoint an ethics monitor for mm -hmm. the town of Oyster Bay. Uh, this has happened before similarly with... Um, it's it's more of these state interventions and this legislature and this type of legislation has been more for fiscal crisis. Uh, recently, the state appointed, I believe it was Hempstead and another school district on the island appointed monitors and th to great results. And the school districts have had some really positive results and turnarounds. And you know, in Nassau, we still have on the county level the Inter Nassau Interim Finance Authority. Mm. Uh, I, I know the town uh, recently stated that they uh, made some improvements uh, and enhancements to the uh, ethics disclosures and ethics rules. But to your point, ethics reforms and rules are only as good as the body that's enforcing them. And um, I think it's it's gotten to the point where we need state intervention and need a state ethics monitor to come in to review what uh, is currently that what the ethics measures that the board currently has, what can be improved about them, and I think we need a new outside ethics council and outside and ethics board. Yeah, I, I think what you speak to um, should be true across the board. Yeah, I, I, this is not a red or blue or purple no. or whatever issue. But and then on the other side is when you do have uh, an institution that has what they call an ethics board, their own constituents in within that circle attempt to take the teeth out of it. Oh yes, we have an ethics board, but the truth is they can't do a damn thing. They right. can they can put up newspaper articles and say, we're investigating and we're doing, you know, I mean, what's the biggest knee jerk reaction when an issue happens anywhere is someone raises their hand and says, we're going to appoint a commission. Right. And that's supposed to make everybody feel good. But I think we've seen it so many times that now it's just a, oh my God, they're doing it again. I think actions speak louder than words mm -hmm. in, uh, not just in, uh, my new world of politics, but in life also. Um, and there's interesting and creative ways you can do this stuff. There can be, there's lots of universities on Long Island. There can be, uh, you know, college presidents, university presidents or professors that can be a state. There can be, um, we have an attorney general. We have a wonderful state comptroller, um, that can, you know, help and get involved with this ethics issue that a lot of, what else I want to do and improve in the town as supervisor stems from this ethics reform. But that but that also leads to you know what I want to do as far as infrastructure and uh, another major point that I want to get a referendum on on a ballot is individual election districts or councilmatic districts. Hmm. Can, I, can I expand on that? Sorry, sure. is that okay? Go, go for it. So Oyster Bay is the only town in Nassau County that does not have individual election districts or what they sometimes call councilmatic districts. Okay. So, you know, in there's I, there's no, you know, Town of Oyster Bay District 1, which is Plainview and Old Bethpage. And then District 2 is, let's say, Syosset and Woodbury. Okay. Uh, Oyster Bay is an at-large town. And what that means is that every board member represents all 300,000 residents in the Town of Oyster Bay. Oh, I see. And what that does is it absolutely just defines Defeats the purpose of local government. Hmm. The point of local government is to have one person that's responsive to a small local community and can advocate for their interests and address those issues. Right. Oyster Bay is the, it's also the only bi coastal town in Nassau County. There is a North Shore and a South Shore. Hmm. It's a huge town. It's one of the largest townships in America, uh, no less the state. And different areas of the town have different interests. The residents in Hicksville may have different interests than those in Massapequa. Right. And residents of Bayville may have different interests than those in Plainview, where I live. Mm -hmm. And in every other town in Nassau County, they have individual election districts or councilmatic districts. So mm -hmm. a significantly fewer number of thousands of residents have one person that they can get in touch with when there's a pothole, right. when there's a light out, when there's issues with garbage delivery or pickup, or mm -hmm. there's an issue with the building department. Mm -hmm. What this does is what is in in place in Oyster Bay is it keeps those in power in power 
because it makes them responsive only to the base that they know is going to come out and vote uh, for them. Right, right. And, and if someone calls in with an issue and the person answering the phone doesn't feel that that issue is a broad enough uh, uh, you know, thing to get, uh, to get them a little applause from their constituents, then they'll, they can ignore it and just go to what's, what's a bigger issue that more people will you know, but as far as ethics goes, you know, being using this as your campaign thing, mm-hmm. there are going to be a lot of people who are, are already ensconced in government. Correct. That may not vote for you for that reason, because you may upset the apple cart because they want things the way they are. Yes. And I do not. Th- and that is part of why I'm running. Right. I don't think th- the way that things are do not help the everyday person in Oyster Bay. Mm-hmm. Uh, housing costs have gone through the roof. It's, uh, I'm speaking to so many people where the people, seniors who raised their families here can no longer afford to stay here. Nope. And the younger people or, you know, whether or not they're married, whether or not they're young professionals cannot afford to live in the areas where they grew up. Right. And it, you, there need, it needs to be addressed. We have a empty parking lot. But see this, <laughs> and I've talked to quite a few uh, people sat in that chair. Yep. And, uh, I maintain that this is an MO, a method of operation that, Long Island has not only lived with, knows it's there, um, and you know you make your money in New York and you spend it someplace <laughs> else. That's that's been a mantra of so this has been going on for a long time. Correct. Um, it doesn't appear as though anybody really does want to change it. Uh, cost of houses are up, so the new people that are coming in usually well off if they can buy. You know, so it it would seem that. Th- that's who they want to attract and are not concerned that the grandma that spent, you know, 50 years living here, raising a family, paying school taxes, yep. doing all, uh, really not concerned about her. She's old news. Let's get the new. So it works for Long Island. It seems to be, uh, you know, it doesn't work for the people. Right. From my view, it's not working. You know, And I and think if you want people to stay here, why would you engineer a system where a kid wants to go to college and he leaves that school with $100,000 worth of debt? Right. You, you weren't setting him up to be able to stay here. Uh, you know, they fed him to the, to the lions because that debt is going to follow him for the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's not a way to enable people to do what we would like them to do, be able to stay in the house right. they, they grew up. And I, I think getting into government, you need to take some bold action, frankly. And it's you need to be not afraid to say that you want to take some bold action. Right. Um, on Long Island, especially even in, specifically in Oyster Bay, because that's where I'm running, right? Mm-hmm. Hicksville, downtown Hicksville. There is so much opportunity there. It is the hub of Long Island Railroad in Nassau yeah. County. Right. There is ample opportunity for transit-oriented development. Right. There can be commercial on the bottom, residential on top. And people can work in the city and still have those jobs and still come back and be on Long Island and shop where we want them to shop, where yeah. we get those sales tax dollars. And somebody that has a small business will have customers and foot traffic. And the current administration in the, in the town in 2018, got either an 8 or $10 million grant from New York State to develop downtown Hicksville. It is five, almost six years later, not a shovel's hit the ground. I, I, there's, you know, I have a, uh, an ad that's going out where I actually stood in an empty Sears parking lot. Right. And there is, there's no plan. There's, uh, it's, it's antiquated. And oyster, the the I, building department. I hope they're getting interest on the money. Yeah. That, that's the, uh, and if they are, I'd like to know what they did. I, I think that's fair. The building department in Oyster Bay is not digital. It's still by paper. A lot of it. And I, I, there are some things you can do online and see things online, but there's no master development plan. That goes to my infrastructure and that goes to the other part of it. My other point is it's, it's kind of like a tale of two Oyster Bays in that if you look at the road quality in certain areas of the town versus other areas, mm-hmm. that all stems from these lack of councilmatic or individual uh, right. election districts. Right. Because if you have individual election districts... Well, they can get out there and say, we fixed roads. What's wrong with you? What are you complaining? Why are you still complaining? Right. We, I, we fixed the roads. We can oh, go hop in my car and drive you, through Hicksville. You can <laughs> fix my road. Correct. Right, right. And I, I, that's so many people that I've spoken to. And I can ass- I, I, you know, bet the house on it that if there's, elect- if there's a district that's plain view old Beth Page, maybe a p- little sliver of Syosset, mm-hmm. there is going to be some different views on the board. I th- there's going to be some people from my party on there 
raising issues uh, and speaking out on what matters to the actual people here. And that's, you know, it's another thing that I've come up with because, you know, as we're in it, right, we're Mm -hmm. 39 days out from the election. We're knocking doors every day. We're talking to everybody. Uh, And whether or not I'm knocking doors, just out in the community doing it. I think everybody can agree. Republican, Democrat, independent, one party rule does not help anybody. No. And one, you know, absolute corruption, absolute power leads to absolute corruption. I flubbed that one, but the point still hits. No, no, Um, it's there's been one party rule, and what this does is this by having an at large town, all it means is rubber stamping of what the supervisor, the deputy supervisor, Mm -hmm. and the Republican Party wants to do. Even when Brian Noon uh, was appointed back in 2017, two Republican board members spoke up because they weren't happy about it. They're not on the board anymore. There you go. Just a reminder, you're listening to this week's Long Island News on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill McIntyre, and my guest today is Mr. Jared Baer, a uh, candidate for the town of Oyster Bay supervisor running on the Democratic ticket. It's just, it's an interesting setup. But when we talk about ethics, um, I also think of the elected guy, and he says, uh, well, I, I just passed a law that, and it, X, whatever, pick it, you know. And you say, well, oh, that's great. Who's going to have the political will? Mm-hmm. To make sure that when those items are breached as far as uh, operating, whatever, that somebody's taking a task for that. We can have all the laws we want on the books. Right. But if there isn't somebody with a spine to say, wait a minute, I'm going to draw the line right here. You step over it and that's it. Because they'll step over it and then they'll move the line. And they'll step over it again and they'll move the line. And it it's very disheartening. So the next time a guy says, hey, I passed a law that does this, you know what? I don't care because the people around that law, I don't perceive to have the political will to make sure it sticks. I'm running to be that guy. And I also, it's very easy to both sides this issue. But if you look what's going on with the center from New Jersey that's currently under indictment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Menendez. Correct. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, the Democrats have come out and called for a resignation. They've said they, they and they've said that every you know you're innocent until proven guilt, uh, innocent until proven guilty. He has a right to fight these charges mm-hmm. vigorously, and he should. Mm-hmm. But it's beneath his office. It's a distraction. It's an issue, and he should resign. Right. In my district in Oyster Bay, George Santos is my congressman. <laughs> yeah, right. Me and too. look what's come out right and and. You know, he's he's still going around the halls of Capitol Hill wearing a freaking AK-47 lapel pin. I get it. I, I, um, so I think it's very easy to both sides of this issue and throw up, but, uh, you know, throw up your hands and say, not throw up. You can throw up at this stuff too, but <laughs> yeah. to throw up your hands and say, oh, both parties, the system. I don't think that's fair. Right. I think that, and that's why I'm 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 proudly running a, as a Democrat in Oyster Bay. Um, and I, I've you know in my first Democratic club meeting, I said I, I have no intention of running as a Democrat light, and trying to you know I I think I um, am reasonable. I think I am moderate with this stuff, but our my party's been right on issues. We've been right on women's rights. We've been right on civil rights. Yeah. We've been yeah. You know, it's so I'm happily doing that. I think it's it's both parties do not treat. These type of ethical scandals, the well, listen, same. If I take a quick look at, at both parties and just a glance, I see, uh, I look at Democrats and I'm, I'm not going to give them a free pass. There's a lot of things that, that I would, uh, you know, uh, uh, complain about. Sure. Um, uh, but I see people who are attempting to govern. When I look at the Republican Party, I see people that are attempting to maintain and grab power. And it's pretty clear. I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a political genius. But when I look and see the things that they're doing, right. I mean, if we look at our, our Congress, uh, National Congress, we got yeah. a Speaker of the House that's kowtowing to about 20 people. Right. So 20 people right now are running the government. And if that's not the tail wagging the dog, I, I, don't, don't, I don't, right. haven't seen a better illustration. And to, to your point, as far as you know, locally what happened here, another thing that drove me to run is you know, as far as people that you know, interest in governing, you know, one party, my party, I, I think, being more interested in governing, another party more interested in maintaining. In, in Oct- I think it was around October 2020, so this is the height of COVID. Mm-hmm. The town of Oyster Bay gave $600,000 in raises to town employees that were politically appointed positions, commissioners, cool. deputy commissioners. And this was, you know, in, in October 2020, you know, Laura Kern, our county executive. What what were you doing in October 2020? You're trying to stay alive. You're trying to stay safe. That's what er, this was. You know, the vaccine wasn't out yet. Right. It, this is you know you're still home. You know our county executive at the time is negotiating with icebox trucks 
because the morgues are overflowing. That's that's what governing is doing, trying to get us through this. And the current Town of Oyster Bay board, their priority in October 2020 was giving themselves and politically appointed deputy commissioners and commissioners $600,000 in raises. Well, you know, they always say a uh, good crisis. Don't let, don't let it go to waste. <laughs> and um, the only reason it came out was because Newsday pushed. I mean, they they right. had to send a FOIL request. Right. They wouldn't disclose the names of well, that. Well, think of, think of how many laws that uh, wouldn't have passed had people been um, attentive and watching on Christmas Eve. Our Congress has a habit of doing that. <laughs> Actually right. convening a meeting and going through and passing a whole bunch of bills that nobody's looking at. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and that's to your point. You know, I, I know I keep bringing this back to Oyster Bay, but this is what I'm running. Uh, you know, this is this is the town that I want to be the supervisor for. We have to have town hall meetings at night. A lot of these town hall meetings are at 10 a.m. That's very difficult. I, I'm, you know, I'm a, my my wife's a physician. I'm an attorney. You know, it, we're working. I have a, you know, I have a. He's going to be. T- I have a one year old and a five year old. To you know, t- 10 a.m. and during the weekdays is a difficult time to get involved with this stuff. We have about a minute left. You if, got it. What do you want to say? I just want to thank you for the opportunity, Bill, to come and speak with you about this. It's exciting. Uh, I, I think from what we've discussed, been discussing for the past half hour. I think my greatest strength is that I've not been an elected official for 30 years. Mm-hmm. I've been a prosecutor. I, in 2011, when my father passed away suddenly, unfortunately, I left my dream job at the DA's office and went back and ran my family's uh, small business, Bears Baby Furniture. I don't know if you remember that oh, from back in the day. Wow, yeah. Yeah, that, that jingle. They run two bears. Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my, my wife's going to just really, I can't believe I just sang that, but <laughs> such is life. And I've run a small business. I've made the decisions. Am I paying myself or am I making payroll this week? It's, you know, right. these life experiences are different. And now as a, you know, as a, as a trial attorney at, at a personal injury firm in Woodbury that, you know, advocating for, uh, you know, accident victims, I, I'm, I'm compelled to advocate. I've, I've lived, I've not, I was not appointed to my position. Right. And I think that we need somebody that is not a career politician running the town of Oyster Bay for the first time in a while. So I appreciate the opportunity and you know, hopefully we can pull something special off in November. My guest today has been Mr. Jared Bear, a candidate for a town of Oyster Bay supervisor running on the Democratic ticket. Thank you for taking the time to be here welcome. to speak with us. I mean, you're a prosecuting attorney. you got to have things on your calendar. I'm figuring, <laughs> right. Right, right? In any event, the clock on the wall says it's time for this week's Long Island News to get on out of here. I'm Bill McIntyre. And remember, you can listen to us by searching for this week's Long Island News wherever you listen to podcasts. And we're right here every Friday, right on the radio at 3 p.m. on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. 